I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. In this chapter of the Silent Service, we're going to take you to that very beautiful body of water that lies between the exotic islands of Lombok and Bali in the East Indies. It is called Lombok Strait. Our submarines in World War II had to use it a great deal in going between their base at Fremantle, Australia, and the Japanese-held areas bordering the South China Sea. It was thoroughly patrolled by the enemy, and passage through it was like running the gauntlet. The submarine crews approached it with apprehension and breathed great sighs of relief after a safe passage. Its beauties were seldom appreciated. <laughs> December 13, 1943, the USS Bergall was stalking a Japanese heavy cruiser in the South China Sea. She fired a spread of torpedoes that streaked towards the enemy and struck with terrific impact. Bergall then turned away, but the engagement wasn't over. The enemy still had some fight left. The submarine was hit by an 8-inch shell that tore a gaping hole in the side. Fortunately, the hole was above the water line, but the Bergall was unable to die. She should have been trapped, but miraculously, she passed unmolested through 1,200 miles of enemy-held waters. Then came the bottleneck at Lombok Strait. It was only five miles wide and loaded with patrol ships, bent on denying her breakthrough to the safety of the Indian Ocean. These little ships were about to bring an end to this epic performance. It looked like the string had run out for the Bergall. They wouldn't give up without a fight. Using every ounce of power, she turned and dodged, shaking off one, only to have another loom up ahead. It was hopeless. The enemy was ready for the kill. Only another miracle could save them. And the Bergall's crew couldn't expect two in a row. But when the firing started, the shells didn't come towards the Bergall. In the darkness, the Japanese had become confused. They were shooting at each other. In the melee, the Bergall broke into the clear, and the miracle was complete. They were happy to be alive when they tied up at the base, but bitter that nothing could be done to clear the patrol craft from Lombok. Next time, they might not be so lucky. Neither would their friends in other submarines. The Bergall skipper was Commander John M. Hyde of Flushing, New York. The executive officer was Bob Ison, an ex-football great at Georgia Tech. The diving officer was John E. Drew of Orange, Connecticut. The torpedo officer was Edward G. Welch of Lafayette, California. Coffee, gentlemen. Did Admiral Christie roll out the red carpet for you, Captain? Just about. I guess he feels a little responsibility for me. Whoops. How's that? Well, years ago, he was the one who talked me into going into submarines. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, Captain, you might suggest that he get the air boys to clear out those patrol boats in Lombok before we go out again. That's a job I'd like for us to do. I've been laying awake dreaming about it every night. If they hadn't started chasing each other around in the dark, I'd like a crack at them too. But they draw so little water, torpedoes would run right under them. And the boss is right when he says a submarine is too valuable to risk against them in a gunfight. I'd still be willing to try it any time, even with brick bats. <laughs> Captain Hyde, your driver reporting for duty. It's Nelly! Battle station. <laughs> Don't you dare! Don't you dare! Captain Hyde! <laughs> All right, Nan. We're not going to pull any tricks on you. Well, you'd better not. I had quite enough last time. All right, boys. Hands off my driver. Now, oh, Captain, why didn't you tell us Nan was driving for you again? She said she was strictly avoiding you vultures. <laughs> Why, Nan, you're still not mad at us, are you? Oh, it's just a joke. Come on, Nanny, where's your sense of humor? Sit down, Thaw, and I'll pour you a cup of coffee. You know, you Yanks carry a joke too far sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Every last in the driver chorus is frightened to death of you. We never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> they love it and you know it. Besides, we haven't heard anybody yet, have we? No, I guess not. Perhaps I should be nice to you. They tell me you're real first-rate heroes. <laughs> For once, the rumor factory has it right. They're even throwing a party tonight in our honor. You're coming, aren't you? Uh, after what you did to me the last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can bring Red Ford. He ought to be able to take care of you. Oh, Red could, all right. Only he's at sea. At sea? What's that swivel chair sailor doing at sea? It's something very important, and I won't go without him. 
Well, isn't there anybody else you'll go with? We'll even invite your father. <laughs> oh, he's in New Guinea. So I would go with Captain Hyde if he'd ask me. You've got yourself a date, Nanny. Oh, get this. <laughs> Jerry. Think you'll be safe here for a minute while I still my cat? Oh, sure. I'm ready for now anyway. <laughs> Hey, it's my birthday. And one of you characters went off with my girl. So how about joining the party? Go on in, right? Go on in. You'd have had an invitation, but we heard you were at sea. I was, I just got in. Good to see you. Go on, have a drink. No, I want to find out. I'll join you. No, come on, come on, come on, on, come on, come on, come on, sit down. You got time for one? Well, uh, just one, huh? Just one, yeah. Bottoms up, huh? Yeah, Good, bottoms, bottoms up. Bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about my going to see? I'm an ordnance specialist, and we got weapons to test, you know. Well, come on, what are you working on, Red? I'm well, still under wraps. But after what the enemy did to you guys, I guess I can tell you a little something about it. Well, go on. Come on, come on. Let's hear it. So you just open the tube to see and let it run out. It swims up and blew it. <laughs> Blowy. <laughs> Battle stations. Hey! Oh, it's you, honey. <laughs> Good morning, Captain. I've been looking all over for you. I just saw Nan and her car over in the dock, so I figured you were aboard. She's still mad. <laughs> I guess so. She isn't speaking to me today. Uh -huh. Seems to think we're a bad influence on Red. Well, Red's big enough to take care of himself. What do you want to see me about? I got some real dope. Red says I've got a new torpedo. Just sent here from the States. It's a little baby, about half size. They call it a cutie. It's designed especially for use on shallow draft ships. What else do he say? Well, not much, except it's acoustic. It listens for the target's propeller noises and homes in on the sound. This is the answer to our prayer. Now those patrol boats in Lombok will really get what's coming to them. Do you think the Admiral will let us do it? I don't know. But it's sure worth a try. I'll see him this afternoon. Good. While the tender crews worked to repair the hole in the Bergall's hull, a skipper had been working on the Admiral. Well, I hope you're satisfied. You're going to get the cuties and I'll probably be pulled across the carpet by some pencil pusher. Well, we had to know about him sooner or later. You sure scare easy. Yeah, scare easy. Is the captain aboard? I got a brief you on this new fish. Oh, and uh, just remember, you ask for them. <laughs> okay, Red. Come on up the wardroom. I'll get them. Now, let me get this straight. You say that this torpedo has to be pretty close to the target to hear it. Yes, sir. The closer, the better. And they only run for about five minutes. That's right. It circles until it hears something, and then it heads for the sound. Well, what's to keep it from hearing us and coming home to roost? Nothing. And do just that if you make more noise than the target. But there's a safety feature. It won't chase you down deep. You hope. What a Rube Goldberg. Do you realize what this means? This means that we put ourselves close ahead of an anti-submarine vessel, go down deep and pray that this contraption gets him before he gets us. That's right, Captain. We found out in our tests that if you let him come close to you before you go down deep, the less chance he has of getting away. Well, how about our getting away? <laughs> well, we didn't run any tests on that, but theoretically... The theoretically, my eye. No submarine skipper in his right mind puts himself dead ahead of an anti-submarine vessel on purpose. I'm sorry, Captain, but that's the only way to make it work. Well, we 
volunteered for this. I guess we'll have to find out how to do it. Thanks for the briefing, Red. And I wish you fellows the best of luck. You know I'd give my right arm to be going with you. Well, that's good of you, Red. Because uh, we need an expert on this new weapon, and I'm going to ask the Admiral to let you come along. Somehow, I think he will. <laughs> <laughs> Bergall got underway from Fremantle and headed north up the coast of West Australia, bound for Lombok Strait. They were a bunch of apprehensive, if not reluctant, dragons. A week later, they arrived at the heavily guarded strait and began the spine-chilling job of hunting for the people who made a business of hunting for them. The sound operators strained for a sign of the enemy, and Red Ford was fast learning some practical aspects of submarining. Didn't they tell you in midshipman school what the first rule in sailing is? No, I don't think they did, Captain. Well, it's don't throw anything to windward. The only first rule they taught us was don't volunteer for anything. <laughs> I guess I should have gone to your school, Red. I wish you had, Captain. I sure wish you had. Airplane on the radar, she's coming in. In the bridge! Peculiar. Green board, pressure in the boat. Take her to 200 feet. Emergency. 200 feet aye aye. Full dive. Full degrees down in bubble. A close one. Now he shot his wad. We're in the clear. For a solid week, the Burgall patrolled the strait, submerged by day and on the surface at night. Lombok was strangely empty of surface craft. But time and again at night, they were sent scrambling below to get away from the air patrol. What are you doing, Red? Playing around with an idea. I wouldn't disturb him, Captain. He's trying to dope out a new homing device. This one's a rocket that homes on aircraft. Now you're cooking, boy. You design something like that, I'll see that you made an honorary submariner. Provided we don't have to ride up in front of the plane to deliver it. <laughs> you know, I got a feeling if more of our ordnance men were made to ride these boats, we'd really get some arms development. Yeah, sure. And something will interest you here. The Admiral wants us to get some prisoners from anything we sink in the Straits. They need them for intelligence purposes. No doubt they want nothing less than a captain. Well, it looks like we're going to have to shoot down a plane to get anybody. Wonder what happened to all those patrol boats. And if I know, they probably heard we were coming. <laughs> there must be a party over on Valley, and they just don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> captain speaking. Very well. I'll be right up. It looks like the party's over. Good. Bearing, mark, zero, five, seven. Range, mark, two, five, double, O. Oh. Angle on the bow, 15 points. We should end up dead ahead of him. Is the target using his sound search gear? Not yet, sir. He's making a pretty slow, steady speed, so he's probably listening. Rig for silent running. Rig for silent running. Red, are those cuties all set to run? All set. They'd better be if we're gonna get out of this spot. Take her down to 150 feet, and be quiet about it. We're still coming. No 
change of course. Turn on your speaker. You turn towards the knock shot and you'll end up dead ahead. Right full rudder. Steady on 180. Open the outer door. Number one, number seven tubes. What's the generated range? 1,050 yards. We can shoot any time. When you think the sound of his propellers is loud enough for the torpedo to hear it, let me know. Pretty soon now, Captain. He speeded up and started his search gear. Captain, I think that we can't wait any longer. Stand by, number one. Shoot. Now pray that it works. Can we hear our torpedo? No, sir. Nothing. Number one torpedo still in two. Stand by number seven. Shoot. Number seven is running. Left in two. Holy smoke. They're liable to chase each other instead of the target. And when they hit... Yeah, that's just what happened. Now look out for... His propellers have stopped. It sounds like he's breaking up. <laughs> two hits. Let's go up and get our prisoner. Let me take him, Captain. I don't have to be a submariner to do that. You're welcome, Red. You can name your own ticket. Surface! were too much for that little fellow. Not a single survivor. Those cuties really work. We're gonna find ourselves another customer. Red, you go to the head of the class, boy. Come on down below and I'll buy you three fingers of the best coffee on board. Captain to the conning tower. Captain to the conning tower. What have you found, Bob? It's another one of our pigeons, and he's headed this way. Sound battle stations. Battle stations, torpedo! Battle stations, torpedo! The angle on the bow is about zero. What are you laughing about? Battle stations. I can't help thinking of our other pigeon, Nanny. <laughs> Barry has the change, Captain. Good. This looks routine. He's coming in fat, dumb, and happy. Open outer torpedo tube doors. Two and eight, stand by. Any time now, Captain. Bear a hand with those tubes. Tubes are ready. Shoot! Shoot! <laughs> What's that? It's a school of porpoises. <laughs> the torpedo's hidden for the porpoises. The target started an attack. Yeah. 
you and your gadgets. He's turning around. Yeah, he's starting another run on us. Stand by eight. Stand by eight. Shoot, shoot. Baby, be there. It's getting closer. Closer. They're on the same bearing. <laughs> His propeller stopped turning. Now let's get upstairs and see what we've got in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Grab the line. I'll fix that. Be careful they don't match you. Watch out for aircraft. They'll be around soon. He's got his prisoner. You know, if Ordnance hadn't gotten red first, he'd have made a darn good submariner. Another department heard from. Bear ahead, Red! We gotta dive! Clean the bridge! Back in a moment with my special guest. When a unit in modern warfare has been given a real bad time by the enemy, there's seldom any opportunity for the individuals involved to come back and get satisfaction. Usually it has to be done by remote control when another unit mauls the enemy for them. It is my privilege to introduce to you one of the persons who enjoyed that rare satisfaction. He is Mr. Edward G. Welch of Lafayette, California, who is a torpedo and gunnery officer of the Burgall. Ed, how would you like to take another load of cuties into Lombok Strait? I can answer that in two words, Admiral. I wouldn't. You have to be conditioned for that sort of stuff. And I don't know of any peacetime job that'll do it. As I remember, the Burgall was the first submarine ever to employ that small torpedo. I believe we were. And there were many times when we would gladly have given that honor to someone else. In talking to your skipper, Captain Hyde, he remarked about how prominent the 13th of the month was in the history of the Burgall. Yes, it was uncanny. It was on the 13th that we were launched. First depth charged, hit by an 8-inch shell, and torpedoed a battleship. He tells me that nobody ever slept on the night of the 13th. That's right. Something always happened. To commemorate that, when the captain was detached, the crew presented him with a watch engraved with a big 13 on the back. Well, Ed, I'm glad it was a lucky 13, and it's been a real pleasure to have had you with us. Thank you, Admiral. Please be with us again for another chapter of the silent service. <laughs> Thank you.